Hello, in the first of this three-part video series we looked at the physical characteristics of the one-piece prototype ball, the current 40mm ball and an old 38mm ball. Now we're going to look at how these balls differ, if at all, in terms of their one rebound speed to see how each ball reacts against different types of rubbers, two bounce and throw angle and three the spin capabilities. And we're not just going to limit our testing to one particular type of rubber because experience has shown in our previous testing that these balls will perform differently depending on what type of rubber they're making contact with. We're going to be looking at six different types. One, anti-spin, Tiber Ellen Defence with a sponge thickness of 2mm in black. The long pimples, which will be Tuple 911, again in black OX, no sponge. Medium pimples, which is the RITC 563, 2mm, this time red. Short pimples, 80240 super soft, 1.5mm red. A tacky sheet of inverted rubber, the Hurricane 3 Max. And a mechanical grip sheet of inverted rubber, the Ratska 7 Max. Normally when I'm testing for things like rebound speed and throw angle, I'll glue the rubbers to this 7mm thick piece of clear glass. And then I clamp it in a suction vise and place it on the end of the table. Then, using a TT Matic 500, I fire some balls at the clamp sheet of rubber and back these tests up with ones which I do at home with my high speed camera. This time, however, it wasn't possible for me to do testing at the Table Tennis Centre with a TT Matic because, one, as we've already seen, the prototype ball is bigger, so it would be difficult for me to adjust the TT Matic's feed rollers for each type of ball, ensuring the same force was applied. And two, the TT Matic requires a certain number of balls for it to feed through properly. I have one. So instead I've had to rely solely on my home testing setup. As usual, the glass was clamped at a 90 degree angle in a suction vise. Then, using my match bat, I used the Cyber Butterfly Challenger Attack 1.5mm to gently hit or roll the ball from a distance of about 4 feet directly onto the rubble surface to see how the ball would react. The high speed camera was mounted directly above the flight of the ball and footage was shot at 1000 frames per second. The second camera, the one I'm using now, was put at the side of the actual setup to catch the bounce of the ball as it came up and hit the rubber, or as it hit the rubber directly and bounced down. This camera only shoots at 50 frames per second. I placed the marks you can see in the background as a reference point to help me analysing and editing the footage which I've recorded. Now this is a far from perfect testing environment, so what you're seeing really is only a rough guide, an indication of things possibly to consider but I've tried as much as possible by using the guidelines which I've actually shown you on the actual whiteboards in the background to match up video shot for each ball against each type of rubber as best as I could in terms of speed, angle of approach, bounce etc. 1. Rebound speed. Same ball, different rubbers. To test this I fed each ball directly onto the rubber surface without it bouncing first. The feeds are done with as little spin as I can and also with as little pace. I've included a guideline to make it easier for you to see any difference in the speed of my feeds onto the rubber and each ball's relative rebound speed off of these rubbers. Using the 38mm ball, the rebound speed was fastest off 1. The Ratska 7 then 2. Short Pimples followed by the Medium Pimples followed by the Hurricane 3 Anti and finally logging a long way behind the Long Pimples. Using the current 40mm ball, the finishing results were the same. The ball rebounded quickest off the Ratska 7, then the short pimples, followed by the medium pimples, Hurricane 3, anti spin, and finally the long pimples. And again when we use a prototype ball. So in terms of the relative rebound speed of these balls, it would appear that the rubbers have no impact on the finishing order. The Ratska was the fastest regardless of which ball was used, then the 8 or 240 super soft short pimples, followed by the 563 medium pimples, Hurricane 3 tacky inverted rubber, Tiber Ellen Defence anti-spin, and finally the Tuple 911 long pimples. But is that the whole story? 
Well, let's take a look. Let's see the finishing positions of each ball against each type of rubber when the Ratska 7, which was had the fastest rebound speed, crossed the finishing line. With the exception of the medium pimples, there is a shorter gap between the prototype ball bouncing off the Ratska 7 and each of the other types of rubbers. The reverse is true for the 38mm ball, which had the biggest differences in rebound speed between each type of rubber, with the exception of the sheet of anti-spin. In other words, the relative difference in rebound speed is less with the prototype ball and more with the old 38mm one. So this prototype ball is narrowing the gap in the performance between the different types of rubbers. Could this mean that your super fast rubber, when you have this prototype ball, won't have the same speed differential against the other rubbers in its class? Could it be that we're about to be subjected to another round of new and improved super race rubbers specifically designed to take advantage of the capabilities of the new prototype ball? Whoopie doo. But what about comparisons between the same rubber and the different types of ball, as opposed to the same ball but different types of rubbers? Well, one of the most common comments that's been made about this particular prototype ball is its speed in relation to the 40mm one. In particular, it's played slower. So, using different footage, this time matching up as best as I can the speed and angle of approach for all the balls against the same rubber, let's see if there's a difference in the comparative rebound speed of each of these balls against the same rubber. First up, the plastic prototype ball finishes ahead of either the current 40mm ball and the old 38mm cellular balls when rebounding off both the anti-spin and long pimples. There's the prototype finishing first again, this time rebounding off both the short and medium pimples. And there's the prototype finishing first again, this time after Hurricane 3 and Raska 7. But notice how much closer all the balls finish compared to when they rebounded off the anti-spin and long pimples. Results. When feeding a slow ball directly onto each of these table tennis rubbers, and I stress slow ball, prototype's rebound speed was faster than either of the other two balls. And the differences in the rebound speed that each of these balls bounce off a variety of different types of table tennis rubbers is greatest with the 38mm ball and least with the plastic prototype ball. And what this suggests to me is that this particular type of plastic one piece ball is going to act as a leveller in terms of performance. It's going to narrow the gap between the different types of rubbers and rubbers of the same type. 2. Bounce throw angle. This is a side on view of each ball bouncing off the rubber surface. I've slowed the footage down to 3% of its normal speed and I've overlaid the footage of each type of ball to try and highlight any differences. Notice how the balls all seem to fall or slide off the long pimples and anti-spin onto the surface base quickly. But as you progress from medium pimples to short pimples and then onto inverted rubbers, the balls bounce more upwards, travelling further from the rubber surface before bouncing to such an extent that it's not possible to see the balls landing on the ground from the Ratska 7. This meant that the only particular rubber I could test these balls against to see the ball bouncing was the long pimples, because that's the only rubber off which these balls bounced within shot of the camera. Looking again, but this time concentrating on each ball bouncing on the base surface, you can see that the 38mm ball reaches its peak bounce height first, and it's lower than either the current 40mm or prototype ball. And this ties in with the bounce test that we did in the first video in this series. Results. The prototype bounces higher off the base surface than either the current 40mm ball or the old 38mm one. 3. Spin. Now I'm always wary of trying to measure or compare the amounts of spin that rubbers are giving out, or equipment in general is giving out, because there are so many variables involved. Angle of approach, speed, rotation of the ball coming in, temperature, etc, etc, etc. But as people have been making comments about this particular prototype ball and suggesting that it's not as spinny as the current celluloid one, I thought I'd give it a try. But again, it comes with a caveat. This isn't a definitive answer. It's just a reflection of what might be happening. This time I concentrated solely on the prototype ball and the current 40mm ball and chose the two extremes in my rubber choices just to try and highlight the differences. 
As I've noticed in previous testing that it's easier to demonstrate the amount of spin that's been generated by getting the ball to bounce closer to the bat. I've selected the side on footage where each ball bounces just in front of the rubber and the incoming trajectory of the ball is as close as it can match to each other. I then match this side on footage with the equivalent high speed film that was taken at the same time and using the marks on the ball I've tried to count the number of rotations the ball made before reaching the rubber and then after contact. Using the Ratzler 7, the prototype ball rotated clockwise more than the 40mm ball before making contact with the Ratzler 7 surface. That's reflected the variation in my feed. On contact, both balls continue to rotate clockwise, but this time the prototype ball is rotating less than the current 40mm ball. Using the 911 long pimples, the prototype ball rotated clockwise less than the 40mm ball before contact with the actual rubber surface again reflective of my feed. On contact both balls continue to rotate clockwise, but this time the prototype ball rotated more than the current 40mm ball. So the prototype ball has less incoming spin to work with, but returned more of it. So much so, if you watch the footage end, you'll see the prototype ball actually spinning backwards after bouncing. Results 1. The lower the friction level of the table tennis rubber's top sheet, the more it seems the chance the plastic one-piece ball will allow the continuation of the existing rotation of the ball compared to the current 40mm celluloid ball. And that's pretty ironic when you think about it, because it wasn't so long ago that the ITTF introduced a friction limit for pimples, which resulted in a number of frictionless long pimples no longer being authorised. But here, they're actually producing what could be described as a frictionless table tennis ball in comparison to this one. Irony, eh? And two. However, it seems as the friction level of the table tennis rubber's top sheet increases, the current 40mm celluloid ball will come into its own and spin more than the plastic prototype. Or, put it simply, if you use inverted rubbers, you're probably going to find it easier to spin the current ball rather than the plastic one. Now I don't know if this has something to do with what we saw in the first video series, this plastic ball having a smoother surface and somehow slipping off the long pimples of the anti-spin more than this particular ball does, but there's definitely a difference in the performance of these balls across the types of rubbers that you can buy out there. 1. The plastic prototype ball had a faster rebound speed than either the 38 or the 40mm celluloid ball. But the difference in performance, or the difference in the speed between the different types of rubbers was reduced. 2. The prototype bounced higher off the surface base. 3. The prototype ball appears to be capable of less spin. Now I have to stress that the testing that I've just been doing and showing you is far from scientific and it's really observations which I've made which people can pick holes in as much as they want. And there are things in it that I don't understand, like for example how a smoother ball can get a higher throw angle off a sheet of rubber than a rougher one. But that's for others to explain, I've just shown you what I've actually filmed. But what I hopefully have shown you as well is that you cannot consider when you're dealing with something as generic to table tennis as the ball, how it performs in isolation from the equipment that's being used around it. If people are only testing how it performs against inverted rubber, then they're not going to get necessarily the true picture of how it's going to perform about long pimples, anti-spin, medium pimples, short pimples. You've got to consider the whole gamut of testing. Do it in isolation and you could miss the whole point of what this ball was capable of doing. Now there is one other factor that we've not looked at and that's players. The human part of this and that's something that we'll consider in the third video in this series. Player perceptions and they'll be hitting the ball a little bit harder than I was doing here, well, a lot harder really, so you'll get a truer reflection of what the speed difference is between these two particular types of balls. Thank you for watching.